What's going on guys? The trade we've all been waiting for finally happened and it wasn't the team I expected. The New York Islanders trading for Bo Horvat. They gave up Anthony Beaulieu, Autu Ratu, as well as a conditional first round pick. The condition on that first is if it's a top 12 pick this year and moves over to 2024 first. So most likely the Canucks will get the pick this year as even if the Islanders don't make the playoffs, they're probably going to be picking somewhere like in that 14 to 16 range, just barely not making it. Now, we're going to take a look at this trade in game guys. I will say I'm shocked the Islanders made this trade. As you look at the standings right now, they're out of a playoff spot. Um, I think they're a couple points back through the Penguins, but the Penguins have games in hand. You've also got the Buffalo and Florida Panthers also pushing for those spots. Capitals are there. Like, there's about five teams right now fighting for two spots. So, I mean, you gotta, you know, admire, I guess, the aggressiveness from Lou. He's going for it. He must think Bo Horvat could kind of put them over that hump to get in. Obviously, time will tell. As you guys can see here, Horvat in game, 27 years old, ace 10 overall. Five and a half million dollars on expiring contract. Obviously having a career year right now. What's he at? Like 40 goals? I don't know. I know he's just scoring like a machine right now. So he wants to get paid. Obviously too, he's a solid, you know, two-way player. And I'm pretty sure the rumor to turn for him was like a young NHL player, two prospects and a first round pick. So they get three of the four. They only get the one prospect. Autu Ratu here, obviously, a lot of people thought was going to go first overall back in 2021, like a year before the draft. He slid quite a bit, ended up going second there. I feel like he's a solid prospect still. Um, I'm not sure, you know, if Vancouver gets enough back here, though, between him, Beauvillier, and the first. Beauvillier here, I feel like a solid, you know, middle six winger. I think he can also play center, maybe. Um, he's a pretty speedy guy, two-way forward. Again, these two plus a first. I will say the good thing for the Canucks is if the Islanders don't make the playoffs or even if they make it in their first round exit, the first round from the Islanders should be like a lot higher than it would have been. Say if like Boston or Carolina trade for Horvat, some team you'd see going deep in the playoffs, this first round pick should be a lot higher in the draft. Um, now, it's not letting us do the trade, says there's too many skaters. So I will take back Furlan because he's actually on LTIR, should have basically no value. So on medium trade difficulty, guys, you can see here the Islanders giving up more value, which is funny because like I said, in real life, I think Honestly, the Canucks could have maybe done a bit better. And again, the Islanders making this trade is very shocking to me, but let's see what happens. Trades rejected. Wow. So even though we have more value on our side, uh, Canucks want to hold on to them. You can see those stats. They're conservative buyer. So in game, they think they make the playoffs, which obviously is a big factor. So here you guys with the Islanders lineup might look like when they add Horvat and they're healthy. I feel like Barzell's still their 1C. Maybe have Bailey Walsh on there on the two wings. I think you got Nelson on the wing now because Horvat obviously is going to go in the middle. Could move Barzell to wing, honestly, have Horvat be the 1C. I'm not really sure. Obviously, they're going to have some options once the team is healthy. Uh, defensively there, you know, still not too bad. The big thing for them is they have an amazing goaltender in Sorokin. Now, I'll also show you guys here your first look at Horvat as a New York Islander. We'll see what he looks like in-game. Rocking that jersey. Definitely be weird to see him not in a Canucks jersey, as well as, you know, not wearing that C. So, right there, you guys can see Bor Horvat on the New York Islanders, number 53. Definitely a little bit strange, but not terrible. And speaking of Bo Horvat wearing a New Jersey, guys, I thought this tweet from Flopfish was really funny. He asked, the most important question here is, who does Bo Horvat play for at the All-Star game now, Pacific or Metro? Because obviously he was going to be in the All-Star game for the Pacific. Now he's on the Islanders who are in the Metro. Does he, like, get traded from the All-Star team? And does that bump somebody out? Do they have an extra guy? Do they call someone for the Pacific? I'm not sure what's going to happen. But definitely just, like, a funny scenario that Lee's got to figure out. All right, guys, so next we're going to try to trade from Vancouver's perspective. Like I mentioned before, I thought they would have a bigger return for Horvat, but still it's not too bad. I saw some people saying the Rebels are going to do, like, one for one larking for Horvat, but... Never really bought into that personally. I feel like we're going to resign the captain as much as people, you know, want to say we won't. So, again, Ratu there, Bolvier. Ratu's actually got like double the value of Bolvier, kind of surprisingly. First round pick, top 12 protected. I make sure to trade away Furlan here so we can just do the trade as is. I feel like the Islanders probably say no, which means it's a fair trade if both teams decline. The value's like double their side. They do want Horvat though. Oh, wow. Trades accepted, medium difficulty, double the value on their side. I don't think I've ever seen that. They must have really wanted Horvat like in real life, so that's actually pretty cool. All right, guys, so the Canucks rejecting and the Islanders accepting means that in-game EA thinks the Islanders won this trade, and honestly, I would have to agree. I really thought the Canucks were going to get more out of Bo Horvat. It is kind of weird that the Islanders are the one making this trade, but like I said, if Boston or Carolina made this trade, giving up these three pieces, I think it'd be an absolute steal for them. And now next, you guys look at the Canucks lineup after trading away Horvat. Obviously, this is when they're healthy. Mikhaev, I know, is out. Same with Pearson. Doesn't look quite as good. Uh, the center depth's definitely not as good. You got Miller there in the middle right now. We could go on the wing. Um, I mean, Bolvier's probably in their top six. Put Coles in. I think really needs to take that next step for the Canucks to start competing again. Garland's got to start playing better. Hollinger's also got to take another step, although I feel like the Canucks are kind of messing with him, really not giving him too much of a chance. Their biggest issue, though, definitely in the defense. You got Quinn Hughes, then after that... I mean, you don't really have much else. Demko being injured this year also obviously made it a lot tougher for them. So I feel like if they're healthy, 
if they can make the right moves, maybe they can, like, you know, start to compete again, maybe make a playoff push. I really don't think, though, like, this retool was the best move. I really think they'd benefit more from a rebuild, trade away some of these guys that still have the value. Uh, for instance, Kuzmenko, I think they could trade away top dollar and said they re-sign him to your extension. We'll see kind of how it all plays out, but if you guys are curious here to see Bolvier as a member of the Vancouver Canucks. Kind of crazy, both these guys have never been with a different team other than the one that drafted them, so... There's Bolvier, 18 on the Canucks. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments section which team you think won the trade. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.